Welcome everybody to a very special episode of Comic Walkers Presents. I'm your host emeritus, Cody, coming to you from Oahu, and we've got, as always, Nick, our editor-in-chief with us, and Hello. a very special guest. Uh, this week we have Stephen Grant. Uh, you might know Stephen Grant from his uh, first comics, uh, creator-owned character Whisper, his 80s Punisher series that he did with Joe Duffy and Mike Zack and John Beatty. It's like the Punisher series of the 80s. Yeah. Uh, and Two Guns, which he wrote and then was adapted into a film with Marky Mark and Denzel Washington. But what you might not know is that recently he, along with uh, Shane Davis and Jeff Davison, co-founded a publisher called Paper Movies. And you know, it's, we've been dealing with 2020, right? So everything's been a little weird. Everything's been delayed. So now we've got Stephen Grant on to talk to us about Paper Movies and the couple of books that he's got. So Stephen, welcome. Hi. So. First of all, uh, are you are you well? Are you safe? How is oh yeah, we're doing fine here. Great. I, I you know I wasn't leaving the house in the best of times, so this is no problem for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So tell us tell us a little bit about paper movies. This is uh, this is a new venture. Uh, well, it's sort of a new venture. Um, I came up with the name Paper Movies a long time. I did a book called Badlands in the uh, like around 1991 that I purposely broke down as widescreen panels for the whole thing because it because I was w working on the theory that a lot of people don't which people who grew up reading comics don't quite get this but I found it to be increasingly true the more I talk to people most people who don't grow up reading comics don't know how to read them yeah. uh, they don't know how to just how to follow the visual language through the thing and it's it's fairly for a lot of them it's fairly incoherent and the more um creative artists got as things went along the generally the less coherent comics got for most people yeah. you know i mean uh, a lot of people have trouble reading daily newspaper strips as it turns out uh, <laughs> so um i had this idea that that um of producing comics that were basically all widescreen panels to mimic a movie screen because that I knew they could get. Right. You know, that I knew they had experience with or a TV screen. And it wasn't so much like imitating the material or anything like that. It was just trying to create a more, an easier entry path for people into comics. I never really got a chance to experiment with this much, but I adopted the name Paper Movies as a business name. And, um, you know, just print it, had had it on my uh, business cards for years. It didn't really amount to anything in terms of a, a company or anything like that. But um, a few years ago, uh, Jeff and uh, a partner of his had in, were investing in things and had decided that they wanted to. Um, well, Shane, uh, Shane was a movie producer, and. He and I, he had hooked up with me at San Diego at one point, um, introduced himself and we got to talking and, you know, got along very well. And he asked if I'd be willing to uh, advise him with properties to pick up since I knew a lot about the comics industry and Hollywood was in a big buying mood at the time uh, because he could put his ear to the, uh, he, he could hit know what they were the type of things they were looking for and then he'd call me and ask me for uh advice on what properties they could go after to uh, that might fit that need of independent comics not marvel or dc because they had right. their own people and um so at one point they were all hot on spy genres and i suggested his name is savage and uh he recruited jeff and jeff's partner who were in the oil business at the time to uh, to finance buying the rights to his name as Savage from uh, Gil Kane's estate, which they did. Right. And then that went into limbo for a few years. And uh, then Shane called me about two years ago. Shane calls me up and says, uh, are you still using the name Paper Movies? And I said, well, no, not really. He said, can we buy it from you? And I said, yeah, okay, fine. And... Uh, they decided to start their own publishing enterprise to get their own properties off the ground. And so um, I said, well, you know, cut me in for 25% of Well, they actually offered to cut me in for 25% of 
well, that was my idea. But I said, yeah, okay, that's fine with me. And uh, so then we said, because I had already started writing, I was writing the His Name is Savage comic that had been that had been started back then, and so that was the first thing that we finished was his name is Savage, and then, uh, and then it was coming up with other properties, and you know I've got drawers full of them. You know there there are so many things that you want to do that you simply don't have the time or the publisher or the artist or whatever to do, and we all have like millions of ideas, and so we started just started batting things around, and uh, Shane was had some of his own, and we uh, so we started putting together a little line of comics what it amounts to and uh, it's finally come out because one thing after another delayed and uh, you know then as you said 2020 hit and here we are so <laughs> the whole industry got 2020 um, yeah I'll say got 2020 so badly yesterday <laughs> <laughs> so now you've got uh, four books from paper movies that are on the stands and will be available uh, tomorrow on Comixology. Am I, is that correct? Right. Yes. Yeah. They were on, went on the stands last week and for the, you know, three comic shops that probably ordered them because they are independent comics. <laughs> and, uh, and then they go on sale on Comicology tomorrow. Comic, Comixology? Comixology tomorrow. Comicology. And yeah. we will make sure to get the links to those in the metadata. Oh, great. Uh, Thank you. So that people can find them a little bit easier because there really are this it's some really fascinating stuff. So the ones that uh, you wrote, you co-wrote with um, Shane Riches, right? Uh, Blue Jack or Black Jackets, which right. has art by Jesus Antonio Hernandez Porta Veritas. Uh, a host. Of, I couldn't begin to say that. So yeah, <laughs> it has a host uh, like four or five different colors and. Uh, the always great Steve Wands on letters. Yes, yeah, we we had real trouble holding on to colorists. So. It it seemed that way. I kind of wondered about that. And then the other book is Borderlines, uh, also right. co-written by Shane Richards, uh, Riches, art by Philip Rene, and uh, lettered by friend of the podcast Taylor Esposito. Oh, okay. So yeah. wanted to make sure we we put a nod in up there to Taylor. Taylor's been on with us before. Well, um, thank thank you, Taylor. So they are they are incredibly different books these two yeah well they were intended to be well i came up with black jackets and shane came up with borderlines so okay yeah i mean tell, tell us more about uh, the process of how these books came about and you know what they're about oh, well, what, you, what you hope people get out of oh well I, you know i can never tell you what i hope people get out of books um i i just hope they have a good time with them that's all uh I, I, I never know what to expect people to expect. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, we just sat, you know, sat down for, oh, it seemed like months and uh, batted things back and forth as to things we should proceed with. Uh, I mean, Shane wanted to start with a, now me, I, I will always gravitate toward crime comics in general. And, but Shane wanted to start with a variety of comics. And um, so he wanted to do, he thought a crime comic we didn't really want to do superheroes or anything we actually have tons of superhero ideas but we don't really want to do them and um shane wanted to start with thought starting with a crime comic and a horror comic and i forget what other things he there were like two or three other things he had but this is kind of as far as the budget went for the moment uh i mean we do have two or three other books but um What's the fourth book that's come out, by the way? Is that Broken Earth or what, uh, whatever it's uh, called? Scorched Earth, right? Scorched Earth, Scorched Earth, yes. Oh, Scorched Earth. I, sorry, I, I should actually know these things, but, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm off here in Nevada. I'm not in the hub of things, so I... Uh, right. But anyway, um, and so I pitched uh, Black Jackets, which was a um, rarely rare for me. It was an, an ensemble piece. Um, and, uh, Shane, uh, had this horror idea that he really wanted to do, which was, and so then we both, uh, went at each other's ideas like, uh, savage dogs for, um, you know, a couple of weeks and then we started writing them. So, uh, you know, it wasn't, it's not a particularly mysterious process. It's, uh, you know, you just start at some point and you, then you start keep pounding at it until they're done. So <laughs> that, it's still interesting to hear how these kind of take shape because the structure of these books, we had a chance to dive into a few of them 
and I, I like in the website how it describes it as uh, kind of for the committed binge watcher. And <laughs> they're about 90 pages in length. So I want to see if you could dive into sort of that inspiration behind these books. Well, I mean, they were all mini. They were originally miniseries. And uh, we kept looking at the market and the changes in the market. And eventually, and I kept saying to them, you know, you really shouldn't publish these. We really shouldn't publish these as uh, miniseries. We should just go ahead and go straight to graphic novel. And I kept going, well, I don't know. And I kept going, no, we really should go to straight, straight to graphic novel. And they kept going, no, I don't know. Maybe we should. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we want, you know, they always had like some argument why not to and then suddenly out of the blue they said you know i think we should just publish these as many as uh you know graphic novels rather than miniseries and i thought what a great idea <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know but it's it's just they were trying to read the market and my mm -hmm. feeling is that reading the market is probably a bad idea you want to try and stay ahead of the market so but uh since no one, which is in, an interesting thing to do, since no one really knows where the market is going at the moment, but yeah, but it's pretty easy to tell where it's not going. So. And especially in the indies, like graphic novels have had somewhat of a boom. I think uh, you're seeing a, a lot more support for them as you have in the past. Oh yeah, graphic novels are definitely doing much better. I think I think most people are copying the idea that they'd rather have a graph, you know, rather have a whole story in front of them than have to keep shelling out and going back month after month and possibly having it collapse midway through because there's not enough orders and you know because that's a pretty common thing these days. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, that's you know. That's the thinking behind all that is that it's just uh, turned out to be probably the most practical way to go. So, so given uh, the name Paper Movies, of course, and uh, your previous success with Two Guns, mm -hmm. how much in your mind was writing towards a potential movie when you were putting together, especially like Black Jackets, right? Black Jackets well, I think it was more in Shane's mind than mine. I uh, actually don't believe in writing toward the movie because... Bless you. My, I see the thing about two guns is I tried selling it for years. I tried selling it as a movie and I tried selling it as a comic book and no one wanted it. And, uh, cause I mean, I, I started writing it. I mean, I came up with it sometime around 1994, 95, cause I just liked the idea. And, you know, it's one of those things you put in your back pocket and you kind of go, well, you know, man, I'd really like to do this sometime. And then finally it got to the point where I wasn't doing anything and I didn't have, uh, you know, and I, I just thought as long as I'm not doing anything, anything anyway, and I really want to do this, I should do this. So I wrote it up and I tried, uh, you know, I tried selling it and no, I showed it around. Nobody wanted it. And, uh, then out of the blue, Ross Ritchie was starting up boom. And he said, hey, do you still have uh, two guns floating around? I said, yeah, I do. And he said, can I, can I have it? I said, yeah, sure. And uh, he published it. And then uh, as soon as it was published, uh, we got into a bidding war over it. And, uh, <laughs> and But the thing about two guns is it wasn't a story that I did to have a movie made out of. It was a story that I wanted, just wanted to do because I wanted the story to be done. And that was a success and my feeling is that if you want if you want that kind of, if you want a success in hollywood you can't do what you think hollywood wants you're better off just doing what you want and letting them see what it is and then they go oh man i want that and uh, because i mean what i tell people is is don't screw up your property to make it fit Hollywood because Hollywood can do that all by themselves. You know, you don't have to do that. Just do the story you think it should be. And if they adapt it, they will make any changes they feel are necessary to the story to fit their audience. You know, it's, it's not your job. Your job is to do the best story you can and do it the most, put the most of yourself into it that you can and just get it to be the most, uh, the most story you want it to be. And that was my approach to these things. So um, so it, it makes for a very interesting writing atmosphere when you're collaborating with someone who has the opposite approach. So, 
<laughs> but it was fun. I mean, we did, we got along fine. We, you know, it's not like we were fighting each other or anything like that. It's, you know, we just bring up different, you know, we'd stop each other at some point and say, you know, you got to do this instead. And, um, you know, and we, as long as you respect each other and give each other plenty of room, that's not a problem. So, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I didn't really look at it as being... I, I wasn't particularly worried about what the movie would look like. Shane is the guy who was going to go out there and try selling the movie, so he was a little more worried about it. So, I think that's something that we see a lot with indie books, especially now that they're writing towards you know some media. Oh yeah, no, I, I constantly tell people not to do that. It's refreshing to hear you know like a focus on storytelling in yeah the well you know do we don't even have to do that just focus on the story you want to tell don't worry about you know whether you need to put this character into it so that they have uh you know so that they have can get an actress to play that character in the thing you know just do the story you want they'll change it if they want to change it they'll change it yeah <laughs> Right, it's like uh, you look at like Mark Miller's Wanted, right? Like he right. clearly that and had it drawn for specific actors. Eminem is the lead and ends up with McAvoy, and it was yeah, right, right. You know, you you're never going to get what you started out started right. out with. I mean, I mean, I often and and I I'm not going to tell you who, but I did have characters. I did have actual actors in mind for the characters in Two Guns. Uh, ah. But they were, but I knew they would never, if, if it was ever, but it was just sort of to, to solidify those characters in my mind. It wasn't anything to do with what I wanted to, what I would want anything ultimately to be, because these characters were, these actors are actors that I like, but they were such minor actors that he, there's no way you'd ever get anyone to finance a movie around them. Right. So, you know, but it's, it's works to like, it helps in some ways to solidify a character in your mind to pick someone that you think they would be and then you could then you have a set number of characteristics you can you can visualize when you're doing it and that helps somewhat you know you don't have to do it across the board but sometimes it helps and uh what i got in the movie was you know nothing compared to you know i was was um in no way, what I'm trying to say is in no way similar than to what I had in mind when I was writing the actual story. But what I had in mind when I was writing the actual story is pretty irrelevant to the process. So, I, I think that's so, go ahead. Oh yeah, I don't. I, I want to know what's next for paper paper movies. Hmm. Like now, you've got to have. I want to know what's next paper. for paper movies. <laughs> 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 um, we're we're. Seeing how these do, we're getting ready to make any changes. There are a couple of other books that we've got, and I don't know when they're coming out. And I don't even, and I'm not even sure what the names will be ultimately, but we do have a couple other things that will be coming out. And in the meantime, Shane and I are discussing other ideas because it's basically him and me who are cooking everything up. And there's room for a couple other things, but we're not really looking for submissions or anything like that. We're not a, we're not a big company. We're not looking to, to uh, put out a lot of stuff. But So we're right. probably prepping like four more books for next year. But awesome. um, it depends on a lot of things. Uh, you know, Jeff is the guy who makes the financial decisions, so it's he's got a lot to say about it. And uh, we haven't really had a discussion with him on what what to do next yet. But we do have, you know, it is coming up. Other stuff is coming up, but uh, the time frame isn't necessarily. You know, it's not going to be next month. Let me tell. Let me put it that way. So. <laughs> I, I'm really interested in the use of like Gil Kane's His Name is Savage. Um, are you interested in having paper movies get more into other IP work and adapting this type of character? Or is that just something that kind of came about with this one? Uh, uh, well, in, for me, this was something that you see Gil and I, I, I worked with Gil in the 90s quite a bit. And this mm -hmm. is something he and I always discussed in the 90s was bringing back His Name is Savage. Okay. And uh, and I wanted to bring back His Name is Savage just because I think it should be there so that people keep remembering the book. Because, I mean, I, I always loved the book, and I think it's a, wor it's a workable property. And I got the chance to update it some, so I was interested in that. In general, I'm not really interested in other IP stuff. That's more Shane's line. I mean, he's brought in other IP stuff. Um, I mean, like the Janet Montgomery um, Scorched Earth book is, you know, we didn't 
we didn't create that. That was her. And um, I don't know what other IP stuff there is out there particularly. I mean, everyone's snatched up anything that's any good. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's, it's, I'm not against it per se, but uh, it depends how much people are going to, are willing to pay me to uh, deal with it. So, yeah, I think that's pretty respectable. I mean, any IP work like that, it's, it, you know, if it can find a place. Um, it, when you're creating something like blackjacks, uh, black jackets, um, the creative process, do you feel like it was a bit more creative freedom in doing it through paper movies than it would in some of the other publishers you have experience with? Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. I mean, it was, you know, it was my company. I was in charge. So, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I don't know if other people would find that it was it's more creative freedom, but I definitely do. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, if somebody came to me with a property and I was just editing it, I'd probably be fairly hard on it. I'd probably be, I'm probably harder on other people's properties than I am on my own, like most people are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd be in there editing very hard if I were editing somebody else's work. As Shane can tell you, because I was, uh, uh, you know, when we were, particularly when we were doing borderlines, I kept coming up with, no, this isn't going to work. We can't do this. This isn't going to work. You got to, we got to come up with something else. And uh, he was, uh, he was getting a little testy with me on a couple of places there. But, um, but yeah, Black Jackets was, uh, was mostly me. He reined me in on Black Jackets. Uh, but I, I, I had pretty much had the, I mean, we, we sorted out characters and things, but the overall design of black jackets and the concept I had all worked out well before, you know, paper movies popped up. So, uh, so that was a matter of just going in there and saying, okay, this is, this is how we're going to do it. And, uh, and Shane coming in and saying, no, this is how we're going to do it. And, you know, back and forth. So, um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, we were our own editors, so that's always, uh, in some ways, it's a lot more freedom, and in some ways, it's a lot less. But it's a lot of fun. So, well, you've been around comics for a very long time, well, uh, and 2020 obviously has been an exceptional year. I wondered if if you'd be willing to share kind of your hot take on the industry <laughs> as it stands right now. I mean, we've got so much upheaval and so much overturn right now that. Well, I mean, we're obviously in a state of chaos right now, um, but. <sighs> The thing is that that the market, see, the comics market never looks at, at what's real. Uh, it always looks at what it wants to look at. Uh, like right now, you, if you looked at the direct market, you'd think that comics are dying. And people keep telling me, oh, comics are dying. And the thing is that Marvel and DC are not comics. Uh, superheroes are not comics. Comics are comics. Uh, the big market right now is the Scholastic books. Um, manga is still doing well. Um, Kickstarters are doing well. You know, if you just look at the direct, the direct market's doing poorly, doing poorly. Bookstores are doing pretty well with graphic novels still, to the extent there are, there are still bookstores. Uh, I mean, Amazon's doing well enough with graphic novels. They started their own graphic novel line. I don't know how they're doing particularly, but uh, but it, they don't seem to be in any jeopardy anytime soon. So, you know, you can look at it from a point of gloom and doom, and I think if you're mainly a superhero fan, you have a lot of reason to look at it for gloom, with gloom and doom, uh, particularly, like I said before, with what happened, you know, with the purging at DC yesterday. I think we're looking at big changes at DC, probably in terms of content. And uh, I couldn't begin to tell you what that those changes. Well, I mean, I could kind of guess what those changes could be because they've been push trying to push them more toward the girls market. Warner's has been trying to push the more girls market for at least a year. You know, with uh, particularly with the scholastic books, and you know, all the, a lot of the new graphic novels that they've been coming out with are aimed in that direction, and um, they've been doing pretty well with those. And I, I suspect that we may be seeing. And I have heard rumors of, ma of mass cancellations of titles, but I haven't heard anything specific about it. So. Um, I couldn't tell you for sure that those could just be rumors, but I would not be surprised to see them cut way back on superhero books because most of them don't sell all that well. And 
you know, in terms of the industry, the industry is going to stick around, but it's going through major changes at the moment. And we may see a lot of old standards of the industry go by the wayside. Marvel's not likely to, but you still, you may see a contraction of Marvel Comics coming fairly soon. Um, you know, I mean, it's hard to guess, but it's either it's either really interesting good times or it's complete gloom and doom depending on your take on what you want from comics so i mean i'd per i personally would rather see an industry formed around the kickstarter model where fans can specifically support books that they want to read uh then and and directly support the creators involved involved in them, then um, companies like Marvel and DC that own the IPs and uh, dole out a pittance while they're making billions. You know, uh, not that DC is making billions these days, but uh, you know, not that Marvel's making billions on the comics, but you know what I mean that they're bring that they take in most of the. Uh, money and i mean i'd rather see the money uh, system where the money goes to the creators so anything that results in that i'm more than happy to see you know whether i'm directly involved in it or not um i think that's the way that the business really needs to go if we want to support new books and new new ideas yeah absolutely i've, I've seen a lot of talk and buzz especially since yesterday about uh unionizing or coming a guild yeah it's probably never going to happen but um and it's for for a lot of reasons, not all to do with uh, the talent and the business. Um, I mean, there are, there are governmental reasons why it's probably never going to happen because it, it was you know it's been tried several times over the decades, and the, I think the last time it was tried, the uh, they were flat out told by because I mean the thing is that you have to get I is I believe you have to get authorized by the uh, National Labor Relations Board. And since the Reagan era, that has become very anti-union. It's it's very diffy. You know, uh, union, there are unions that are grandfathered in, but um, you can't form a you. You know, you can't. It's very hard to start a new union. Another complication for us is we're all freelancers. That means we're independent contractors. That means we can't unionize because that's price fixing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so there's all kinds of complications in this. If we were all employees of companies, then we could unionize. But, you know, companies don't want employees for the most part. So, <laughs> um, you know, they at least they don't want creative employees for the most part. So, so um, I mean, I, that's, you know, there are, like I say, there are a lot of reasons why that's probably never going to happen. And the I think the industry has found itself in a, like a period of transition and I'm one of the ones where I look at it and say, you know, the, the future of the industry is, you know, stuff that we're seeing from companies like paper movies. Um, there's a lot of different indie companies that are kind of rising in, in all of this and Kickstarter has played a huge role in, you know, right. allowing people to look at indie books, but you know, what do you feel that paper movies finds itself in the industry today and what they need to do. To Boy, succeed? I hope so. <laughs> I couldn't tell you for sure. This is a big experiment for us. So, uh, but you know, we'll see. I mean, the the thing is, the thing is that if if I mean, like every other company, I mean, I, I think pretty much every small publisher out there does have an idea that of turning things around and selling things to movies, um, or tell or television properties or whatever, because you kind of have to, uh, because that's you. You know that's a revenue stream because comics themselves it's questionable as to whether comics themselves can be a functional revenue stream or whether you have to use them as loss leaders for the other revenue streams um you know i mean i'll tell you here's a story from a few years ago at san diego i uh shane's brother had written a screenplay that they couldn't sell called the safest place which they asked me to adapt into a com into a graphic novel which we did and um, image published i don't remember when but they might still have it on their books but um the year it was published we got part of a table at san diego for a few hours and we're pushing it there and shane decided at the 
eleventh hour to get a uh, get T-shirts done to put on a logo, and he got like a hundred T-shirts made with the logo on it. Just plain gray T-shirts with a logo, nothing special. And this was an unknown book, so a lot of people came, would come by the table, and you know, I sat there signing them for a couple hours, and that was fine. But, but um, people would come by the table and kind of look at it a little sideways, like, "Oh, what's this?" And I'd explain the premise to them, and they'd go, "Oh," and then they'd see the see the T-shirts, and they'd say, "Well, how much do you want for the T-shirts?" And I'd say. Um, well, the T-shirt, because this is what Shane wanted, the T-shirts aren't for sale, but if you buy a book, we throw a T-shirt in for free because that was his big promotional idea. And Shane had gone off to some meeting for like 45 minutes. When he came back, I said, you know, you've got the wrong business model here. Um, you're trying to sell a $12.95 book and give away an $18 T-shirt free with the purchase of a $12.95 book. You should be selling an $18 t-shirt and giving away a $12.95 book free with the purchase of the t-shirt. And uh, he didn't change his mind on it, but it was, you know, it was obvious to me just from sitting there that if we had been selling those t-shirts for $18 a pop, we would have sold them all out in about 10 minutes. And it was a nothing t-shirt. So, um, you know, we should really be marketing, uh, stuff to go with this stuff. And we haven't started doing that yet. And this is something I've been talking to them about. But my feeling is if you're publishing your own stuff, you have to start looking at any auxiliary income streams that you can possibly manage because that's where your money, that's where your, your money's going to come from initially is things that people can have that they think are really cool. If you can come up with really cool side stuff that you can also sell, you've got a much better shot than if you're strictly trying to sell your book because the book is unknown until they're until you can get word of mouth out about the book you're not it's not going to get anywhere it's not probably not going to get far you know but on the other hand you do have social media and things you can market to some extent on and that's helpful but it's a barrage of social media out there so uh bobbing to the surface and all that takes a little work too so you know, but th that's my feeling about uh, this stuff is that if you want to start doing it, it can't be a hobby. It's got to be an industry. Well, the website is papermovies.com. There are a number of books out right now. Uh, is there anything else we can get? You know, they can order the books uh, through their LCS through Diamond. Yeah, correct? yes, they can. Diamond, Diamond in Theory and has then... the books, yes. <laughs> okay. In theory, in theory, Diamond has the books. Comixology will have the books. We'll get those links up. Uh, is there anything else you want to share with our oh, with our audience? Just to keep season? looking for us. Uh, keep looking for me in particular, and keep looking for paper movies. Oh, uh, you know we're we're always. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm always working on stuff. You don't see a lot from me these days because I've been working on things, but nothing's been coming out. But. Um, but I got a lot in the, in the pipeline, and uh, it'll start showing up. Well, when when things start getting uh, either when things start getting better, or when uh, people get desperate enough that they don't want to wait any longer. So, so, but uh, so, just you know. But th thanks to everyone for all the support. Um, I uh, I talk to a lot of people on Twitter and Facebook and uh, I really appreciate the support and uh, so thanks thanks to everybody that's really what I want to say is thanks to everybody out there so. uh, we absolutely appreciate you coming on uh, we will continue to put out whatever we can to let everybody know that paper movies is out there books are coming out and uh, they're they're fucking good well they're thank good you books. too glad <laughs> you enjoyed them so. oh. all right well thank you very much Stephen Nicholas, you got any final okay. parting shots before we head out? Um, you know what? If I'm a new reader, Stephen, what book would you recommend for uh, paper movies for someone to jump into? Uh, his name is Savage, I'd say, is probably the most immediately accessible. Um, yeah. yeah, or, I mean, of course, pers personally, I, am, I have a fondness for black jackets. Um, <laughs> 
It depends. I mean, uh, like, it depends on your particular take. If you like horror comics, start with uh, Borderlines. If if you like crime comics, start with, uh, well, either His Name is Savage, which, you know, it's a spy book, but it's also kind of a crime comic. There's fuzzy room there. Uh, you know, and if, if you like action adventure, start with uh, His Name is Savage. And if you like science fiction, Scorched Earth. So uh, Something for everybody. Huh? Yeah, you know, that was kind of the idea. So... All right. Well, it's been a pleasure, Stephen. We'll be looking forward to uh, catching up with you further down the line, too. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Comic Watchers out. <laughs> <laughs>